Well, that is very loud in there. Someone very excited. I'm excited too. So let's fucking do it. Dusty show, it's time for the Dusty show. We all have fun and we never grow. It's time for the Dusty show. Woo! It's time for the Dusty show. It's time for the Dusty show. We all have fun and we never grow. It's time for the Dusty show. Time for the Dusty show. It's time for the Dusty show. We all have fun and we never grow. It's time for the Dusty show. It's time for the Dusty show. It's time for the Dusty show. We all have fun and we never grow. It's time for the Dusty show. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the universe's greatest program. It's the Duffy Show, the only show with floating cats. All these floating cats. What the fuck? You guys have one job, no floating cats. Anyway, they'll be around. It'll happen. And folks, got a, a real slow, fast show for you guys. What the fuck? Got a <laughs> we got a real fast show for you guys because it's been a slow news week. Not my fault. Uh, we all know it's your fault for not going out there and making a fool out of yourself on video so I can make fun of you. The least you can do, but whatever. But at least I uh, worked my ass off and put together something for you guys to enjoy. So uh, we're going to have fun, hang out together, and uh, finger a blast through this really fucking quick. Hell yeah. So how's everybody doing tonight? I love you and missed you. I was thinking about postponing the show tomorrow, but it's like, no, that's my weekend. I can't do a show on the weekend. Do it on Friday. Let's just do it. It's all good. It doesn't have to be a long show. Sometimes people prefer the shorter shows, right? I'm assuming. So, hell yeah. Uh, it's okay, Sith Page. I'll let you pass this time. Better than nothing. Hell yeah, Jeff. Better than nothing. At least we get to hang out together for 45 minutes and uh, show you guys some love. Because I do love you guys and I do appreciate you joining me tonight. Hell yeah. Didn't do anything fun yesterday. Just slept, just rested, which is fun enough. I enjoyed myself. God damn it. Do I love some sleep? Yes, I do. All right. So let's go ahead and kick it off, folks. As always, Super Chats are the light bulb of the show. I answer everything you write. So uh, button over here. Click it. And uh, here it is. There you go. Boom. Right screen. And uh, donate. And then I will read everything you say at halftime and the end of the show. So support me and the floating kitties on the Super Chat. Thank you in advance. Hey, here we go. We got one. Finally. Thank you, Half Stash. You guys have one job. I appreciate you. Look cute. Be my co-host. Yeah, that's right. Ride around back there. Show everybody how cute you are, you little fat motherfucker. Yeah. Daddy's boy. We gay as shit around here. Me and pretty boy and a half stash. Cull it all the time, but it's a good life. I enjoy it. And all right, let's go ahead and kick the show off, folks. Gonna start off a little something I like to call Chud Watch. Yeah. Is that a question? Chud Watch. Talking about Chud Watch, we talk about Chud, and then we make fun of them. Woo, woo, woo. And hell yeah, starting us off on Chud Watch, apparently there was an earthquake, yeah, a minor earthquake uh, down there in the New York area. But don't worry, folks, it was God, God all mad and shit. And uh, some people think God was sending the earthquake to support the January 6th uh, prisoners. You know, the people that ride and try to overthrow our government. I guess God is a little slow on the uptake. That happened like a long ass time ago. God just now finally getting upset about it. Uh, sloppy Steve Bannon got to explain it to us. So, Jim, and I, by the way, you remember, there are no conspiracies. What the fuck? God damn it. I have one job, motherfucker, son of a bitch. God damn it. Click the wrong button. Let's try it again. So, Jim, and uh -huh. I, by the way, you Hello. remember, there are no conspiracies here in the war room. Don't believe in them. Uh -huh, but definitely. also, there's no coincidences. Uh -huh. I'm just saying, if you check the timing, that when we start the interview with the great-grandmother who's now up for sentencing for three years in federal prison for praying in the Capitol, that's when an earthquake hit New York City. Mm. Proof. Just saying. Letitia just saying. James should take notes. Take notes. Alvin Bragg should take notes. Take notes, Alvin Bragg. There are no coincidences. No coincidences. I think the timing works out perfectly. Timing works out perfectly. God is watching Steve Bannon's show, and God was pissed. He was like, I'm going to send an earthquake to show them how mad I am, but I'm not that mad. I'm just a little bit ticked off. So just send a minor earthquake so you guys can know that I'm a little bit upset. So, uh, hey, I'm getting the exact opposite warning he's trying to give me. If God was madder about the January 6th people, it would have been a lot bigger earthquake. So God not very mad. God pretty pleased about it. He's just trying to have us a little uh, shake, rock, and roll. And he ain't the only one. 
blaming God for the earthquake. Marjorie Trader the Queen says, God is sending America strong signs to tell us to repent. A better send a stronger sign, God. I can't hear you. Earthquakes and eclipses and many more things to come. That's right. Hey, we didn't know the eclipse was going to happen until recently, right? How does science work? Anyway, I pray, I pray that our country listens. Only, uh, wasn't there like a pandemic when Trump was president or something? Funny how that wasn't a sign that God was angry, but a minor earthquake and an eclipse. I don't know what eclipse has to do with God being mad and wants us to repent, but, uh, fuck you, God. You will never burn me. I will be your heretic. It's a great Red Hot Chili Pepper song if you've never heard it. And, uh, that... Folks, you're not going to believe this. Speaking of God being angry, guess where the epicenter of the quake was? That's right. It was a Trump golf course. Trump National Golf in Bedminster, the epicenter. So maybe Marjorie tried to quit his own or something. Got a little bit angry at the orange goof. Are you going to listen, Marjorie? <laughs> no, that is the answer to that question. And uh, speaking of Donald Trump, bad day on the stock market. Trump Media Technology Group Corp uh, dropped another 12% today. So last five days, we're down 32%. Almost seems like some kind of scam, pump and dump. But oh well, imagine the fucking dipshit boomers who bought in at the top at $70 a week ago and instantly lost 30% of their life savings. But good, you guys deserve it. Go towards the light if you're upset about it. That is... Uh, my advice to you. And uh, that, folks, Jeffrey, no, <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has a great explanation on why he was hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein. It's not uh, that he is a pedophile. It's just that he hangs out with a, a lot of sexual deviants. Uh, this is not as good of an excuse as you think it is. Let's have a listen. Yeah. Oh, and I you run into everybody in New York. I mean, I knew Harvey Weinstein. I knew Roger Ailes. I knew O.J. Simpson came to my house. On yeah. the, Bill Cosby came to my house. Stop talking immediately. Oh, my God. You know, his campaign chiefs are back there like, dude, what are you doing? Shut the fuck up. Yeah, I hung out with Hitler and uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, John Wayne Gacy. Me and him were tight as fuck, but uh, I'm not a bad judge of character. Make me president immediately. Uh, no, that is my answer to that. And uh, then, folks, he's uh, apparently, it looks like to me, he's trying to become Donald Trump's vice president. I may be wrong about that, but let's see what you guys think. He put out a public statement about January 6th, and he just shilled every Trump talking point. Uh, here he is. He's like, uh, Independent presidential candidate Robert Kennedy Jr. today issued a statement to clear up his views on the amounts of January 6th, 2021. January 6th is one of the most polar... Okay, I can't read that. January 6th is one of the most polarizing topics on the political landscape, and I'm listening to people of diverse viewpoints. <laughs> oh, maggots, that's what he's listening to. On it, in order to make sense of the event and what followed, or, you know, you could just watch what happened. You could read what they said ahead of time, what they were going to do, and then what they actually did on the day. You could do that, or you could just listen to a bullshit artist lie to you after the fact and then spread their bullshit. Um, because it happened with the encouragement of the president. No, it's, it's quite clear that many of the January 6th protesters broke the law in what may have started as a protest but turned into a riot. Yes, a violent attempt to overthrow the government. That's what it was. We saw it. Because I happen, because it happened with the encouragement of President Trump and in the context of his delusion that the election was stolen from him, many people see it not as a riot but as an insurrection. That's because it, it was an insurrection. They were trying to get the government to not... Uh, certify the votes and do a peaceful transfer of power to joe biden right that's what happened i have not examined the evidence in detail well then why the fuck you got an opinion on it why are you coming out with this goddamn long statement if you haven't researched it isn't that the first thing you should do before you come out with a statement about how you feel about it is research what the fuck happened nope apparently not but reasonable people including trump opponents tell me there is little evidence of a true insurrection. What Trump opponents are telling you, there is little evidence of an insurrection. We literally fucking saw it, dude. They observed that the protesters carried no weapons. That's not true. One guy fired a gun in the air. The guy, the QAnon shaman, had a goddamn 300 spear on the end of a fucking flag. You lying sack of shit. 
um, had no plans or ability to seize the reins of government. They literally had a gallows erected. Okay, mob mentality. When you have a lot of people together, scary shit can happen, right? You can overwhelm people very fucking easily. The mob is the weapon. Happens all the fucking time throughout history. Um, and that Trump himself had urged them to protest peacefully. Yeah, but that's just uh, to give himself plausible liability. He's like, go over there, fight like hell. You're going to lose your whole country. The whole world is going to end. Be peaceful. Fight. Destroy them. Crush their bones into powder. Peacefully. I mean, we can all see through that, right? That's bullshit. If you believe that, you believe anything. Like many reasonable Americans, I'm concerned about the possibility that political objectives motivated the vigor of the prosecution of January 6th defendants or, you know, their traitors who try to overthrow the government. Could be that. Anyway, he coming out, spreading Trump's narrative. Next thing you know, apparently, uh, Trump thinking about, hey, what if me and Kennedy were all on the 2024 ticket together? Trump, Kennedy, 2024? Trump at least is intrigued by the idea. Bet he is. The former president has probably floated the idea of Robert F. Kennedy Jr. as a running mate. Those close to him do not see it as a serious possibility. However, uh, Mr. Kennedy said he would not consider it. Yeah, but I bet he would. If he didn't think he was going to win, thought he could be vice president, he would definitely jump on those Trump nuts. And it seems like exactly what he's doing by putting out this statement claiming the January 6th insurrection was not an insurrection. So what do you guys think? Would a merger between Mar-a-Lago and Camelot prove irresistible for American voters? It could. I mean, it couldn't hurt Trump's chances. He's already winning on the swing states. And uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. has a few percentage points. Maybe if those got thrown to Trump, hey, it could uh, put it in his favor. I don't know. Wouldn't put it past him. We'll see what the fuck happens. And uh, then The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, came out today and threw Joe Biden under the bus. He was like, I fucking supported Joe Biden back in the day. And I regret that every day of my goddamn life. Let's listen to him explain to us. Am I happy with the state of America right now? Well, that answer is no. Hell Do no. I believe we're going to get better? I, I believe Hell in that. No. I'm an optimistic guy, and I, I believe we can get better. We suck. Um, the endorsement that I made uh, years ago with Biden was one I thought was the best decision for me at that time. And I thought back then, when we talk about, hey, uh, you know, I, I'm in this position uh, where I have some influence, and... It's my job then. I felt like that then. It's my job now to exercise my influence and share with this. This is who I'm going to endorse. Am I going to do that again this year? That answer is no. Am I? Happy? I sort of don't blame him, you know, because of all the child murders. I kind of feel the same way. Remember, I was calling Cal Kalinske a weasel. I must have called him a weasel like a million times because he was saying, I'm not going to vote for Joe Biden. And I was like, you fucking asshole. You let Trump get in the presidency, and now I'm starting to feel a little Weasley myself. Now, don't get me wrong, I still hope Joe Biden will win, I guess. I guess. I guess I hope the child murder, genocide Joe will win. I mean, another part of me, little small part, is uh, an accelerationist. I hope the entire country collapses so I don't have to continue to pay for the murder of children, you know, which I uh, am against. So uh, I sort of hope Trump wins and destroys the entire goddamn country and we all collapse into a pile of shit and we re rebuild from that. But uh, still, I know a lot of people will be hurt and I don't want all those people to be hurt. So I guess I want the horrible, horrible, ghoulish child murder to win. What you gonna do? It's a great country. But anyway, I feel where Rock's coming from a little bit. He ain't endorsing nobody and I don't fucking blame him. I ain't endorsing nobody either. So uh, me and Rock on the same goddamn page about this one. People matter to though. Uh, the, the left, they mad at Rock. They go, no, Rocky. Rock's always been kind of right wing anyway, though, I think. I'm surprised he came out and supported Joe Biden to begin with. Vote for anyone who's not Trump. Yeah, I guess. We'll see. I oh, don't know. All right. The, the, the other guy's like a child murderer, right? It's hard. It's hard to cast that vote for a child murderer, right? For a guy who's murdered more children than every serial killer in the history of this country combined. You know, it's hard to say, yeah, that's my guy. I'm going to go with a good conscience. I'm going to go mark that guy's name down. That's just me. You guys do you. You guys uh, might have less of an aversion uh, of voting for child murderers than me, but I'm kooky that way. I get upset with the thought of murdered children, but I don't know. And uh, that. 
Elon totally got owned as he's wont to do continuously. So he posted this link from, oh, oh no, no, I thought they deleted it. Good. He posted this link uh, from uh, In Wokeness. He's always signal boosting for these right wing shitheads. In Wokeness says, Holy shit! The number of voters registering without a photo ID is skyrocketing in three key swing states Arizona, Texas, Pennsylvania. Since the start of 2024, Texas, uh, 1.2 million. Pennsylvania, 580,000. Arizona, 220,000. HAVV allows voter registration with Social Security numbers and four digits. Illegals are not able to get licenses there, but they can get Social Security cards for work authorization permits. Data is publicly available. And, of course, Elon is, like, extremely concerning. He doesn't want to put his two cents on because uh, then he has to defend his idea, so he just, like puts uh looking into it or wow or, or whatever the signal boosted which you did here and then immediately uh, gets owned by this gentleman steven richer who is the uh Mara, maricopa county recorder literally works uh for the elections right he says hi elon the post you're quote tweeting seems to suggest that based on social security administration data 220,000 illegal immigrants have registered to vote in arizona since january 1st 2024 a few things if i may be so bold since i have easy access to maricopa county's data which makes up 62 percent of arizona number one only 39,000 new voters have registered in maricopa county in 2024 in total for arizona that number is about 60,000. arizona's voter rolls have actually been going down in maricopa county we've gone from about two 2.6 million active registered voters in 2020 to about 2.4 million active registered voters in 2024. SSA is not used to check citizenship. It's used to check proof of identity. Motor vehicle divisions are typically used for proof of citizenship. In Arizona, since October 1st, 1996, drivers have had to provide proof of citizenships for driver's licenses except Type F. We use this data to confirm citizenships for the vast majority of registration applicants. We also have some other tools that are disposable and will communicate directly with the voter to get documentation. If the voter cannot provide documentation, proof of citizenships, but still attest under penalty of law that he is a citizen, he goes on what's called the uh, federal-only list in Arizona. In Maricopa County, there are 23 thousand registered voters on the federal only list there are about 30,000 for all of arizona again these people attest that they are u.s citizens but they have not provided documented proof most studies show that these people are disproportionately college day students perhaps who don't have ready access to a birth certificate but there is zero validity to the suggestion that or original post that 220,000 illegal immigrants have registered in arizona in 2024 hope this helps we love the recent rocket launch uh, that we could see in Arizona sky, blah, 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 blah. And of course, no reply from Elon Musk. All he does is fucking lie. Uh, that's his basic job. Push right-wing talking points. Knows he's never going to be held accountable. So uh, I guess you do you, Elon. And then, yes, we all, every one of us, should simply despise Elon. He's always trying to push the narrative that immigrants, that's what we should really fear, folks. It's not the uh, runaway gulf between the richest and poorest americans it's not lack of health care homelessness none of that folk brown people super fucking scary immigrants and he's like uh this is crazy foreign born population growth under barack obama sixty eight thousand per month donald trump forty two thousand per month Joe Biden, 172,000 per month. Oh, my God. Foreign-born population growth only. Um, Elon Musk is foreign-born, and he has 11 kids himself. Literally, with the main people on the goddamn planet contributing to this single-handedly. Dude, you had 11 kids. You're an immigrant. You're in that statistic. You're foreign-born. I'm like, holy, but it doesn't matter, folks. Because to Elon, he's an American. He's a white American, born and bred here in his own mind, and uh, not like those ignorant brownies. I dare you come up to this country and have kids. Unlike me, it's fine if I do it. Uh, but he's just trying to scare people because he's a racist dickhead. And that is uh, my chud watch. Hell yeah. Short and sweet tonight, baby. Like me. No awareness at all. I mean, it doesn't matter, though. It's like uh, Trumpism. His words don't matter at all to those people. The people that follow Elon Musk, like, uh, so it came out in Reuters, uh, Reuters today that the car he's been hyping forever, the low price EV he's going to make, it's not going to happen. Uh, 
Um, so he immediately goes out there and claims that on 8-8 of this year, he's coming out with a robo-taxi. Now, this is bullshit, complete bullshit. Uh, the people that are testing his uh, full self-driving, quote-unquote, Every one of them says there's no way this thing is even close to being ready to be a full self-driving taxi. It's years away. But he came out and said that, and the stock price went up 4%. Because it doesn't fucking matter. Doesn't matter the uh, fundamentals of the company. Doesn't matter how overvalued it is. It's a cult, just like Trump's cult. And they follow him blindly, regardless of what the fuck he says. Are they fighting back here? Is it a fight? It's the two, it's the two little... Uh, these are my two little new rescues, Piper and Precious. They're the ones I got out of the back of the 18-wheeler when I was visiting E over at the hotel he was at. Aren't they cute? Hey, let me touch you, bitch. He's like, oh, don't touch me, daddy. I'm too good to be touched by you. I'm precious. Mm, ooh la la. You let me pet you sometimes. Don't act like you don't. Playing hard to get. That just makes me want to pet you more. Hot cat. Lesbian cat action in the background. Hell yeah. Scissor, do it. No, don't do it. That's gross. Gross people. Never, never. And uh, they're not fighting. They're loving each other. Both probably on, in heat. All my boy cats are fixed, but not all the girl cats are fixed. So I don't have no uh, babies or nothing around here. But some of these girls are a mess. They want that dick so bad. They want that dick so bad. You guys have some shame. Yep. Cute, though. Gotta admit, they're cute. Floating cats. That's what makes this the world's greatest show. Hell yeah. And all right, move right along, folks. Get your super chats in. Uh, we're going to read them all after the, I guess, mm, I guess we got a couple more sections. Let's look at them in. We're going to do a what the fuck mixed with trash world. So, what the trash world? Oh, Woo, yeah. No. And, uh, no, don't play the show much again. Don't play the show. Ignore that. That didn't happen. And first off, on the what the fuck trash world, did you guys hear this? This should be in the Beyond Parody, really. Florida man, of course, accidentally shoots pal in a vigilance drill. The Volusia County Sheriff's Office on Tuesday arrested 25-year-old Brad Marky Perez after he allegedly shot his pal by mistake, authorities said. Deputies found the victim suffering for a gunshot wound to the jaw. I mean, you guys are lucky. It could have been a lot worse. This could have easily been a negligent homicide. Marky Perez told deputies he and the victim like to have drills. Uh, they like to drill each other, I bet. Where they practice with each other the importance of being vigilant of their surroundings. You failed miserably in every step of this. Especially while armed with a firearm. That's just smart right there. An arrest affidavit said Marky Perez was in his living room when the unidentified victim came out of the kitchen and told him, bro, I could assassinate you right now in the blink of an eye, the affidavit said. Thinking his roommate was engaging one of their regular arm drills to stay vigilant and had something in his hands, Marky told police he pointed a gun at him and accidentally pulled the trigger. Because of course you did. That's just genius. So, yeah, I mean, I guess you guys probably should just kill each other. I mean, you're not smart to be alive. And uh, you're in the right state for it. Can't have Florida without duh. And uh, then uh, another terrible story, folks. I don't know why people keep jumping off cruise ships. Do not jump off a cruise ship. I can't believe I have to say this. So drunk 20-year-old, dad fussing at him for being drunk. He jumped overboard spur of the moment. They haven't found him yet. Yeah, he did. Okay. First off, he jumped from the 11th story, which is 150 goddamn feet. All right. That's like smacking into goddamn concrete when you hit the water. Number two, like, there's no visibility. The, the big cruise ship, they don't know you fell off. By the time they found out about it, they're already down the goddamn road a bit. They ain't gonna find your fucking body, smash the fucking pieces. So anyway, uh, long story short, don't jump off cruise ships. How many times has got to happen? Good lordy, y'all. Just don't go on cruise ships, period. They're nasty anyway. Petri dishes. You're going to get sick, y'all. And then, warning, warning, death happens here. Don't watch this. Do not watch this. This is what the fuck. So, uh, apparently in Pakistan, very popular kite fighting. Um, and so what they do is they coat their kite string in glass because I guess kite fighting is about cutting the kite string of your uh, opponent's kites. And so I guess this little kid who's about to run away from the crime scene that you see here uh, is out flying his kite uh, around these people. And uh, yeah, the guy got murdered by kite string, folks. Imagine being killed by kite string. 
driving along and oops yep kite string caught him by the throat there he is and there's a the little kid He's like, uh-oh, uh-oh, and he's like, oh, shit, I done fucked up. I think I killed that guy. I better run away, and yeah, uh, you better run away, and so this guy's like, what the fuck was that? It was Kite String, and he's like, am I hurt? Yeah, you hurt, dude. You hurt. You got your jugular cut. Yeah, uh, just lay down for a second. You're going to be fine. No, he died. That's what happened, so I'm not going to show you the rest of that, but that's crazy. Don't put glass on your Kite String, I guess. What is wrong with you people? And uh, then, oh, the trash world. More ACAM, folks. Uh, this cop got caught red-handed planting a bottle of alcohol on this poor dude. The bottle of alcohol is completely sealed. She opens it and then puts it in the front seat and they charge him with open bottle of alcohol. This kind of shit happens all the goddamn time. It's very angering. Meet Calvin Riley. He's being stopped by the Tallahassee Police Department on South Monroe. Sir, I'm Officer Oliver Tassi, Police Department. Do you She'll plant evidence of an empty liquor bottle in Riley's car before arresting him for an alleged DUI. Riley's license is suspended, and officers decide to arrest Riley on a first offense for his suspended Would license. Would you be willing to do some voluntary field sobriety exercises? Not really. Okay. Here, go ahead and step out of the vehicle for us. They didn't tell him the consequences of refusing that voluntary test. and face the corner of the car for us. Your license is After suspended. detaining Riley, they ask him if he smoked any marijuana. Mr. Riley, I got a quick no, question no, for you. No problem. Um, so I smelled marijuana in your vehicle. Did no, you recently no, no, smell? No, 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 no. Once he's arrested for driving with a suspended license, they can search his car. Officer Oliver leaves the car, does a 360, and then goes back in the car, retrieving a sealed liquor bottle and pours it out. Yep, you can hear it. Yeah, there's the that clicks. That was the sound of the seal on the liquor bottle breaking. Mm-hmm. Pours liquor off so she Here's can another angle. blame him While for Officer open Moon bottle. questions Riley about marijuana again. Did somebody else is smoking your car early? Good God, All so annoying. the empty bottle into the passenger seat. Uh-huh. They don't find any marijuana in the car. Here's Officer Oliver implying to Officer Muth that so the empty just, bottle was likely what was in a cup in Riley's center console. Cover where, like, the knee would sit. There's How? You opened it. And hit it. It was closed. Uh, tucked. Okay. And then the, the mm. water okay. we had in his cup also stopped. Ba, ba, ba. Then right. Officer you Muth know. tells a senior officer that they found open alcohol in the car, That's in both a bottle and a cup. Did y'all um, search the car? Yeah. Okay, nothing in there? No. Well, okay, so he had a bunch of alcohol stash in there, but... Nothing open or anything? Yeah, open. Yeah, open! open. Yeah. yeah, in his, like, turn By you. center console, he had... A mixed drink and then under his knee he had on um, a like little bottle of vodka tucked away Where when officers group to discuss the case they all ask each other if their body cameras are off still alive do you have any evidence of that marijuana yeah are you still on mm -hmm. the video mm -hmm. ends at this point riley's arrest report states quote a search of riley's vehicle yielded a small bottle of vodka that was opened in a pocket in the driver's seat cover Riley's case begins on Friday, April 5th. Yep, A cab, another lawsuit that you and I are going to have to pay for. And then they did the deposition of her, and uh, seems like she might have some memory problems. Perhaps she should not be a cop if her memory is this bad. Was he cursing during this period of time? I don't remember. His left blinker was on, is that correct? I don't remember. Which was the registration for his car, correct? I don't remember. Because the car had automatic lights. I don't remember if it had an auto setting. It was a strong odor. It wasn't strong, but I couldn't remember smelling it. Vehicle? I don't remember if she searched the vehicle. So you don't remember her searching on the passenger side while you searched on the driver's side? No, I don't remember that. You told Officer Muth that the bottle was open? I don't remember my exact um, phrasing. You can just show me Objections where it's recording. Improper impeachment. Do you not remember? I don't remember the exact placement. You told Officer Muth that the bottle was open? I don't remember my exact um, phrasing. I don't remember what my thought process was behind the statement. I don't remember the conversation. So you don't remember discussing indicators impairment that you saw in Mr. Riley? I don't remember discussing that, no. Did Officer Muth or Sergeant Smith ever convey you that their body-worn camera was on after you had turned yours off? I don't remember. Just good God. Another 20 seconds goes on. I don't remember. I don't remember. What the fuck do you remember? 
Do you know where you're at right now? Uh, but yeah, she remembers. They just know they get away with it, folks. They feed upon us. They love it. And speaking of which, another lawsuit taxpayers going to have to pay for. Massachusetts officer charged after punching a handcuffed man 13 times in the face. Stop <laughs> resisting. A former Weymouth police officer is now under arrest, accused of punching a man in the face more than a dozen times while that man was in police custody. We want to warn you, our viewers, the video may be disturbing to watch. This is body camera footage from July of 2022. It's alleged 43-year-old Justin Chappelle punched the handcuffed man 13 so tough. times with Fucking a closed cowards. fist. Chappelle later resigned. Now he faces a charge of deprivation of rights and faces up to 10 years in prison. If Put his ass out of the fucking jail, goddammit. Uh, but yeah, bankrupted us. That's what they do. And then you guys hear about this fucking shit. Killer Jock 17 boasted. I guess I'm just too strong after helping beat boy 16 to death. Look at this fucking piece of shit. An alleged killer jock bragged about beating a 16 year old boy to death at an Arizona house party saying, I guess I'm too strong. Tylen Renner, 17, reportedly boasted to Snapchat friends after throwing hammer punches on Preston Lord at the bash in Gilbert, Arizona in October 2023. He wrote, I got in a fight, a big group fight, and I accidentally killed a kid. I guess I'm too strong. Renner and six other alleged bullies have been arrested over the death of Lord, who died of a brain injury two days after the beating. Police records allege one unarmed, unnamed boy danced on the dying teen's body shortly after the beating, while others performed humping simulated rape acts to further degrade the victim. Newly released communications said to be between Renner and friends offer a chilling insight into the aftermath of the deadly beating Arizona family reported. Ritter allegedly couldn't help but brag after Laura was killed, texting fellow suspect Taylor Sherman to say, I'm going to hospitalize that kid. I hit him pretty hard. The millionaire gym owner's son uh huh, is also said to have shown a video of the fatal beating he'd recorded on his phone to friends while declaring, oh, I put this kid on life support. They let this dude go play a football game after he killed this other dude. He was voted player of the game. Uh, so, yep. The different set of rules when you're a white athlete to a millionaire parents. Put him in the fucking jail with the goddamn cops we saw above, in my opinion. And then, uh, folks, once again, uh, do not watch this. I don't know if you heard of this crazy-ass story, right? Some of it's on video. The Apple River stabbing trial. 17-year-old Isaac Schumann died and four others were wounded. Let's see where I'm going to start with the story. Um, anyway, I'll just show you the video. Nobody in this video looks good. So you got this doughy old white guy, this doughy boomer motherfucker. I guess he was out looking for a cell phone or something that got dropped. And then all these incredibly annoying asshole kids surround him in inner tubes. They float down the river and they get an altercation. And uh, the kids are acting like fucking monkeys. They're acting like shitheads, uh, and he's acting like a fucking shithead, and it ended up in the death of one of them. Warning, this is disturbing if you haven't seen this. What is he on? Whoa! 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 <laughs> They're basically all laughing him, mocking him, knocking him down, slapping him. And he decides to retaliate with a knife. What happened to the innocent feel proven guilty? That only is for a court of law. That doesn't mean we have to wait for 12 idiots and a jury to decide who's guilty and who's not. We can look at the evidence for ourselves and decide what our own opinion is about it. Yeah, Anybody says hell? that stupid shit, it's so dumb. Why do you make yourself look so bad? Yes, yes, yes. Burn the culture. Burn the culture. Who is that? Burn the culture. God, this Who kid is, is so annoying. Who the hell is this? Makes me weep for the youth of the nation. Go. It doesn't matter. Go. 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 Go
Then they get up in his face, mock him, push him down, start slapping him. <laughs> and he pulls out a knife. He's got a knife in his hand. Yeah, you guys might want to leave him alone. And yeah, so he stabs that kid. So yeah, that kid stabbed and dies. So now they're all freaking out because shit just got real, real. Yeah, it just got super real, didn't it? Are you serious? Is it real? Yeah, this is why you don't act like that. I mean, I'm not saying that guy was right to do that, but like. There's no reason to escalate shit like that. Just go along with your fucking day. Everybody should have gone along with their day. None of this had to happen. Is this real? That's not bike! That's not bike! That's not bike! That's not bike! That's not Isaac! Oh my god! This is real. It's crazy. Holy shit, this country's just falling the fuck apart. Walk away. There is no reason to interact with anybody like this on any fucking side. Just so stupid. And uh then you guys here speaking of a trash world about the National Guard member who defected to Russia. Guess why he did it? Because he was going to trial for pedophilia. Former Hollyoke City Councilor Wilmer Pulo Mota has reportedly defected to Russia and is now living in Moscow, where he worked for the Russian Defense Ministry, according to his Facebook profile. The Facebook page of Will Hulo now features a photo of the Kremlin in the Russian capital and a picture of Pulo Mota in full military gear, gear while operating a drone. The former city council councilor who ran unopposed in November 2021 and took office in 2022 was arrested in September 2020 in Warwick, Rhode Island and charged with possession of child pornography. The 17-year-old victim said that Pulo Molto, who was 24 at the time, had sent her money via Venmo for sexually explicit photos, though he knew she was underage. Yeah, Russia will take you, though. Russia don't give a shit about you being a pedo. But Vladimir Putin himself is a pedo. You'll fit right in in the land of pedos over there. And uh, then one more. Do you guys hear that they're closing all the 99 cent only chain stores? Who could have seen this one coming? Yeah, obviously. Inflation, hard to find anything for 99 cents anymore. And so they like couldn't change the name of the store, I guess, to like uh, $2.99, $1.50 or whatever. I don't know. So they just closing them all. All 371 stores. The idea of dollar menus is a uh, long dead idea in this country. They done printed too much money. They printed 40% more money in the last four years, folks. I have people in my goddamn uh, post, in my comments, telling me that the fact that the government printed 40% more money is not a major source of inflation. You can't even talk to these people. How could you even argue with somebody who would suggest that the government printing 40% more money is not a major cause of inflation? I mean, obviously, fuck it. It's just stupid. So, yeah, got to keep happening, folks. If only there are a way to hedge your bet against inflation. I'm not allowed to talk about it. And all right, that is my trash world. Horrible in this week. Corporate profits are up. True story. But I mean, uh, a, a lot, large part of that is because they printed 40% more money. And so if there's the same amount of money, uh, if there's more money, 40% more money chasing the same amounts of goods and services, then they can price gouge more and raise the prices because there's more money in circulation. It goes hand in hand. 
So yes, they did price gouge. They did do record profits. But the reason they were allowed to do that, a, a large portion of that reason was because so much more money was printed and put in supply. That's just how basic supply and demand works. I can't believe I have to argue with people about this, but whatever. You guys need to have some chats with uh, the uh, AI programs, ChatGPT, Gemini Advanced. I've had lots of conversations with them about uh, the economy and inflation and who it hurts more. And inflation hurts poor people more than it hurts rich people for obvious reasons. Uh, poor people have more of their money in cash, in fiat currency, and the rich people have more of their money in um Stocks, Bitcoin, stuff like that. And so it has a much more a pr profound effect on poor people than it does rich people. You don't believe me? Go ask Chad GPT if you don't believe me. And uh, all right, folks, printing for some more money would not be a problem if the government uh, removed 40% more money via tax. I mean, yeah, if goods and services went up by 40%, it wouldn't be a problem. Also, if the economy was raging to allow them to do that, then there wouldn't be inflation either. But none of that happened, so... Twitter economic scholars. Yep, yeah, that's me, baby. 99 cent only stores aren't so great anymore. I haven't been there in years and years and years. Don't even know what you would buy there for 99 cents. I don't think I would want it if it's only 99 cents. Cheap shit. Where did that river stabbing happen? Um, what the fuck was it? Um, is, it is this it? Yeah, this is it. Let's see. Uh, since you asked... Apple River, um, doesn't say. Let's see where Apple River is. Apple River stabbing. Let me just Google that shit. Search Google. Um, don't know. Doesn't say. So, mm. what caused the Apple River stabbing? According to court records, the stabbing took place on the Apple River near Sunrise Bridge in Somerset, Wisconsin which allegedly started after Mew was apparently looking for a friend, Ariel Chatelea's cell phone in the river, but was confronted by tubers who said he was acting sketchy. So, answer that question. Hell yeah. All right, we're along, folks. What are we doing next? I'll be going to do some... Whoa, 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 whoa! Panic! at a short woke panic get your super chat since the last one before the halftime and uh first off on tonight's woke panic the whiny piss baby snowflakes are back at it folks this time you know what they're super upset about gender neutral bathrooms yeah i mean they're literally gender specific bathrooms in this uh i guess it's an airport this woman could use any of the gender-specific bathrooms if she wanted to, but she would rather bitch and moan that they have these even more private bathrooms that anybody can use. Let's watch her whine about it. Guys, I'm here at, in Kansas City, and I came across this all-gender bathroom. Uh, literally all gender. Look at this. 20 stalls, all, all gender. This is so... This is crazy. I'm... Forgive me for filming in a bathroom. Not forgive me. That's this weird. It's all gender. It's literally nothing. Okay. This is. I hate this. I absolutely hate. <laughs> then don't use it. I've never seen an all gender bathroom. Oh my god. I'm not going in oh here. God, oh my god. I don't like this. Oh, as I'm here oh, at all gender City. bathroom. What are we gonna do? The world's ending. People are peeing in privacy. Oh my god! Just shut the fuck. Die already. Holy fuck, what is wrong with you? They're so pathetic, they're so weak, they're so whiny. Meanwhile, the new thing they're outraged about, there is a play. Tom Holland and uh, Francesca Amawuda Rivers are doing Romeo and Juliet. No big deal, right? Who gives a shit? Uh, but something, something about this has the right to wait upset. I wonder what it could be. I wonder... I wonder what about this play could be upsetting to... Ch oh, yeah, black. Blackity black, 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 black. It's black. They cannot stand it, folks. Oh, my God. They had a black woman in a play. It's woke as fuck. They're like Romeo and Juliet movie, then versus now. They are rewriting history because, you know, Romeo and Juliet, they're historical characters, right? No, no, they're not. And uh, this is not even a movie. This is a play. This is a movie. You didn't even get that fucking part right. 
But folks, wait. Uh, oh, let me show you this first. <laughs> Yeah, Romeo and are historical figures now. Italian historians will take good care of the realities regarding Romeo and Juliet. DEI movies are meant to distort reality. That's right, they distort realities. But wait till they find out that the original Romeo and Juliet were both played by men. Yeah! Wait till they find out that drag is an age-old art form that was very popular in Shakespearean times. Almost all of the uh, Shakespeare plays were originally done by dudes. Wait till they find that shit out. Why aren't they mad that they used a uh, non-dude in the movie? They had a guy and a girl. Why are they not mad about that? Oh, my God, you're destroying our history. You're rewriting the whole thing. Almost like you're full of goddamn shit. All right, folks, that is my woke pennant this week. Hell, yeah. And, uh, folks, I have a patron. Duh, my dude. Yeah, show Dusty. I have a patron, and it is in the description of this video. The link right there. Boom, click it. And uh, it loads up my Patreon. If you could, si could consider, please, uh, chipping in a few bucks to help out me and the Floating Cats. I uh, work very hard on the show, and I'm trying to make a living wage, so I keep doing this. And if you watch a couple of episodes of my show a week and you enjoy it, please consider supporting it so I can continue to do this and entertain you guys. I, I thank you in advance and uh, appreciate you letting me beg you for money. And uh, all right, I got a uh, – let me open this real quick. And I got a couple people on – open, motherfucker. I got a couple people on PayPal I want to think that sent me um, – donations through paypal and i would like to thank you for it because that was very kind and generous of you so uh big shout out to aaron babcock and uh, marcia carhoff and randall brush uh the you three uh, very appreciative marcia aaron very generous and, and i thank you very much and uh, also occam's machete on X slash Twitter sent me a very, very lovely and thoughtful gift in the mail. I'm not allowed to say what it is, but uh, I got it, and I appreciated it, and I enjoyed it. So thank you, you fucking hero. And if you guys want to send me something in the mail, there's a link in the description of every video to my P.O. box. So do it to it. Well, whatever you send, I will appreciate and enjoy. And now, Super Chats. Uh, Rebecca Poise. What up? Hero of the show, Rebecca Poise says, thank you for not giving up. Your reporting on genocide and rescuing those cats can't speak for themselves. Uh, means so much looking forward to the rerun hell yeah looking forward to you watching tomorrow rebecca and thank you for always being so good to support the show and uh five got them five uh free memberships for you guys from rebecca poise and 10 got them 10 from ivy evans hero socialism give them some love brian paul able to give a bit tonight i wish you were more but times and stuff i heard that brother uh doing what i can love from the embarrassing state of north dakota don't you know hey uh way better than mississippi right so I can't handle you there. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate you. What? Mitchell God. I call Dusty Memberships. Appreciate you, Mitchell. John Bliss, $5. Hi, Dusty. Had to leave visiting family in Florida on my birthday, no less. All because they are Trump cultists and want to argue. Uh, you know how it goes. Yeah, I wouldn't even argue with my family anymore. They're just like cavemen. They're primitives. Why the fuck would I argue with these idiots? I don't respect them. I don't respect their opinion. I know they're too stupid to know what the fuck's going on, so why would I even bother talking to them? Answer, I do not. Hi, guys. If you're watching. Um... Not my mom, though. My mom's awesome. My mom doesn't count. And BBC, what up, BBC? I'm in the money. I'm in the money. Hell yeah. Thank you, BBC. $50 always so generous. How's it going on the lawsuit there, at BBC? I sure appreciate you, BBC. Amazing and a great guy. I've met him in person and uh, was terrific. And 10, got the 10 socialism for BBC. Everybody loved BBC. He wrote of the show. Scholar King Two Lawrence, been a fan since 2013. I've been doing this forever. Love you. Love you back. What happened to E? Oh, man. Now you had to bring up E. Uh, I haven't heard from E in a while. I don't know. No, I, I, e might be around. He might be around in the in the chat somewhere. Like, I don't think he really liked my coverage of the Palestinian conflict very much. Um, and, like, I understand where he's coming from. I think I don't want to give his background too much away. But he is a veteran, and I think that he was in Beirut, and uh, I think that he had some bad experiences with Muslim people. That's my uh, understanding of the situation. So he has a very, very different take about this whole thing uh, based on the fact that he was shot at by Muslim people. Um, so he is way, way more pro-Israeli than I am, and I don't think he liked my coverage of it. And, uh, you know, that's that. I, I respect his opinion, and um, but doesn't change my opinion, doesn't change the fact that I cannot idly sit by and let children be murdered under my tax dollar, and I do everything I can to speak out against it and try to keep it from happening. So, you know, what you going to do? I, uh, I had the choice to... <laughs> Stop talking about it and keep getting the money or talk about it and not get the money. And, you know, 
you guys know me i can't i can't take the money i just can't do it so uh whatever it's all good no hard feelings to E. I, I very, very much appreciate E doing everything he did for me while he was able to do it or why he wanted to do it. It meant a lot to it. He did a lot for me, and I really appreciate it. BBC $10 Sofa King. Hell yeah, for the winter night. I can't wait to get off so I can smoke a little myself. <sighs> little tea. Much love to the mods, DSPs, kitties, and puppies. I love all of you. My brain in a vat, the brothers and sisters. Free Palestine. Hell yeah. We'll about to do a little Free Palestine. Thank you, BBC. Come in, Mickle. Uh, against diaper don yes i'm riding with biden a vote blue y'all that's totally your right and i do understand that but also i'm child murder and uh juke what up juke dusty thanks again so much for the song and please debut cakes during an after party sometime all right i will uh i will debut cakes at tonight's after party uh juke the malignant paid me to make a song that he wrote the lyrics to called cakes and uh i haven't finished it yet I got the first, like, minute and a half, two minutes of it done. Still working on it, but I'll play it for you guys tonight in honor of Jupe. Thank you, Jupe. Also, you totally corrupted me elsewhere. I'm getting nitrous delivered tonight. Oh, man. I shouldn't say this. So, uh, you guys remember, I did too much nitrous a, a couple weeks ago, right? I did too much. I did it for three days straight. It was bad. It was bad, and I'm ashamed of it. And I promised you guys, I promised you and myself, that I was never, ever going to do it again. And uh, I'm a man of my word, folks. I would never lie to myself, nor would I lie to you. And uh, on a completely unrelated note, I did nitrous skin yesterday, folks. Now, hear me out. One of you guys sent me nitrous, okay? It was Machete. Machete sent me not a big, this giant thing of fucking nitrous. How am I not going to do it? The universe is literally sending me drugs in the mail when I'm not even asking for it, which kind of makes me like a rock star a little bit. But like, and I did it. And I got to say, I had a great time. It's fun. Like, I really, I actually believe in this drug, y'all. I think nitrous should take the place of alcohol. I really do. I've done enough of it to know that you can do it for three days and be pretty safe about it. So I feel okay recommending it. And I had a fucking blast. I always enjoy it. It is fun. It is like, it's like alcohol, but no calories. And you don't have a hangover the next fucking day, unless you do it for three days straight. And it's just better in every single way. I think it's a healthy alternative, in my opinion, to alcohol. The only problem with it is you have to have these big fucking really strong tanks. That's very, very inefficient. So um, if we could find a better way to store it or, or like maybe reusable containers and it was legal to go refill and shit i think a lot of lives will be saved compared to alcohol i, I really believe that folks but anyway um thank you Jube. enjoy it it's fucking fun dude it, 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 you'll have a good time uh stay in your bed watch tv and listen to music don't go anywhere don't try to walk around too much just fucking veg out and enjoy that shit Venture Van Death will get you to grow. Also, if you guys want to send me nitrous, uh, feel free. There's a link in the description of my video in my P.O. box. Send me more. I will do more if you send it to me because I like it. Uh, death will get you to grow old quick. <laughs> no. yeah, death will kill you. Uh, get, it will age you very quickly. You're right about that, Venture Van. Floyd Fluffin stuff, $10. I'm late. Nope. What the hell? Why did, it dis Why did it do that? God damn it. Here it goes. I watched a car ditch being pulled over at full speed with... FHP in hot pursuit. I saw several additional units join in uh, the chase. All I could think about was bad light decision. Enjoy prison, fucko. Yeah. Catch raises. I got a bunch of them. Thank you, Floyd Flood and stuff. Uh, feel free to steal them. Lizzie bit of $5. Dollars. The chuds are mentally deranged. That's a true story. Wait till they hear about Juliet. Uh, that play has been out for years. And Juliet. Wait till they hear about Angelie. I don't know what that is. Did is that another play that I haven't heard of before? What is that about? That sounds awesome. How's life, Dusty? What up, Isaiah Taylor? Uh, did you hear about trans scandal at Space Camp in Alabama? I did not. Nobody sent me that on uh, Twitter. So do so, so I can cover it. Thank you, Isaiah Taylor. Jupe. Aaron Babcock equals your favorite Jupe. Okay, Aaron Babcock. Cool. I should have known that. I think I do know. did know that. I just forgot. So thank you for reminding me, Aaron. And uh, thank you for supporting the show. Grassy No, I should research modern monetary theory. Do it. Actually, I just... I, I, you said I should research it, but I'm guessing you meant that I should research it. I, I actually have researched it. I watched the uh, video that someone sent me after we talked about the Bitcoin thing uh, from the uh, Minority Report where Sam Cedar is talking to the woman who wrote the book about this thing. And I'm sorry to say she was wrong about the whole fucking thing. She was talking about printing all this money and how it wouldn't be bad for the economy. And we have like 20 percent inflation. 
she was wrong. I don't know how not, I don't know how to pretend like she was right because she wasn't. I know Sam Cedar is great and everything, but I just don't agree with it, y'all. I don't agree that printing lots and lots of money when the economy is not gangbusters is a great idea. It's just not. Inflation is bad for poor people. If you don't believe me, go ask ChatGPT, okay? It knows more than I do about it. And uh, Skylar King, keep up the good work. I love your coverage of horrible news. Here, here to make up the law supporters. Appreciate it, Skylar King. Uh, we drop it like a stone, but we're still having fun doing it, and that's what counts. Uh, Frog Star 499. Thumbs up to you, Frog Star. Good to see you tonight. Don and I from Social Us. Uh, B, my C, Free Palestine, Cuba. P, S, C, U, Lift the Blockade. All right, I'm for all that. Hell yeah. Agent Orange, my dogs, also amazingly generous. Agent Orange, another hero of the show. I'm late for the greatest show. No forgiveness. Here's some socialism to pay for my transgression. Okay, you know me. I'm a slut, so I forgive you, but only because you gave me money. And Vincenzo AB. Last but not least, the uh, love you, Dusty, but money supply uh, does not equal inflation. Uh, modern monetary theory explains this quantitative theory in quack size from concern. All right, but that's not true. It. So you guys, just go have a conversation up, uh, with this about this with chat gpt or um i should do it sometime on the show yes if the economy is gangbusters if there is a a, a, a glut of goods and services you can print money and not have inflation happen but it's just basic supply and demand if you have more dollars chasing after the same amount of goods and services then the people supplying those goods and services can jack the price up causing inflation it is a stealth tax on the poor i mean I just don't agree with it. Like, and chat G, all the, all the AI bots also completely disagree with you guys. So uh, you got to talk to them about it. I believe them more than I believe you. That's just my opinion. <laughs> Lindsay Bennett, two dollars. And Juliet is what if play where R and J didn't die. All right, cool. Juliet, like, should have just chilled the fuck out. Just waited a couple minutes. Or was it Romeo? Which one couldn't wait five fucking minutes? Both of them stupid and deserve to die. And, uh, all right, we're right along, folks. Thank you. For all the generosity, still plenty of time to get suits. Yeah, we're going to read all the rest of them at the end of the show. But for now, it's time to raise your fist and free Palestine. Money has no limited supply. Yes, that is why it's a fiat currency. And that is why it's inflationary. Unlike Bitcoin, which only has 21 million total that could ever be mined, uh, which is deflationary, which is a better way to store your wealth because the central bank can't print more out of thin air, which devalues your money and is a stealth tax. Very simple. And all right. You guys don't believe me? Just go argue with the chat bots. And uh, starting the sound on tonight's free file, son. Inflation is mostly down to price gouge. And so... Uh, once again, the reason the companies can price gouge is because there's more money in supply chasing after the same amount of goods and services. Yes, they are price gouging, but the reason they can do that is because there's more money in the system. If there wasn't more money in the system, then there would be no money for them to price gouge, right? That's sort of how the supply and demand works in the monetary system. Uh, anyway, Jose Andres is the guy that uh, runs the organization where all the food aid workers died, the ones that Israel murdered right before our eyes and uh yeah he went on I, I showed this on the uh after part of the last show where he's claiming that he believes that all seven aid workers killed in the israeli airstrike were targeted deliberately which i think there's a pretty good argument that that's absolutely what the fuck happened israel killed them on purpose in order to try to uh, stem the flow of aid so that the palestinians would starve quicker because they're insane right and uh so here is the zionist take on it I know Andres is a saint and all and hates Trump and stuff, but he can go fuck himself with this disgusting blood libel. Yeah, calling out Israel for murdering seven people is blood libel, uh, but killing seven people is completely fucking fine. That's how crazy these sacks of shit are. It's like a nation of bloodthirsty fucking ghouls. Meanwhile, somebody fuck your chat box, train on conservative logic. It's so stupid. Like, this is like the, the opposite of what Elon Musk says. Elon Musk claims that all the chatbots are left-wing. They're all woke and shit. N neither of those things are true. The chatbots just go out and they uh, they scrape the internet for all the information, and they come and they collate the information, and they try to decide from that information what is more likely to be true based on uh, history and uh, economic scholars, right? 
it's not weighted one way or the other. Anyway, it's fucked up when you have to burp your words. Ooh, why are you burping your words? And uh, anyway, this is Biden hugging Netanyahu in Israel. Just after Netanyahu killed the first 1,000 children. Send more bombs, Butcher Biden did. They keep doing this theater where Joe Biden pretends he's so mad, I'm so angry at Netanyahu, yet never fucking does anything, which is exactly what happened again this week. He put out this statement for immediate release. Read out from President Joe Biden's call with Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel after they killed the uh, seven aid workers murdered. President Biden spoke by telephone with Prime Minister Netanyahu. The two leaders discussed the situation in Gaza. President Biden emphasized that the strikes on humanitarian workers and the overall humanitarian situations are unacceptable. He made clear the need for Israel to announce and implement a series of specific, concrete, and measurable steps to address civilian harm. It's all bullshit. Literally every fucking word is horseshit. He's not going to hold Netanyahu accountable for anything. He's going to literally send them more bombs. He did. He did. After he said this, he sent them more bombs, folks. It's all theater to make us believe that he fucking cares as he pays for funds and sends the bombs to murder more children. And people like this, uh, JoJo from Jersey, this is somebody I used to respect, somebody I followed for a long time on Twitter, a, a Democrat. But one of the people who has pushed me from ever calling myself a Democrat because these people are as cult-like as every goddamn Trump supporter. Joe is like, he has been listening. He has been pressuring Netanyahu. This is a breaking point. This is a last straw. They don't give a shit. They will shill for Biden no matter what the fuck he does. And this is how evil happens. Evil persists when good men do nothing. When they don't hold other evil people accountable, when they won't stand up to child murderers and call them out for what they fucking are. You, Joe, are exactly why I will never call myself a Democrat again. Fuck the Democrats and fuck you. Evil. You have decided to become part of this evil. I don't know why you decided to become this person, but it's ghoulish and you should be a fucking shame to yourself. Meanwhile, Biden to Netanyahu, protect civilians or else. Hey, let's read the fine print. He said, however, neither Blinken nor National Security Council spokesman John Kirby, speaking later at the White House press briefing, detailed what those potential policy changes would be. Because there aren't any. He is not going to stand up to Netanyahu. He never has. Even if he did it right now, it would be too little too late. 16,000 dead children, all the infrastructure of Palestine blown to fucking back, starving children, American citizens murdered. It would be too late if he did it today, but he still ain't going to fucking do it because he does not work for us. His loyalty does not lie with America. His loyalty lies with Israel. He works for Israel, not fucking us. Yeah, here's another one. Biden's net Yahoo protects civilians or else. Yeah, U.S. approves more bombs to Israel on the day of World Central Kitchen strikes, folks. Shitting in our mouth and telling us a pumpkin pie is gaslighting pretending he's angry while sending more bombs to kill these people. Do not fall for it, or do. If you want to be a, a dipshit, a bootlicker, go fucking ahead. Meanwhile, hey, hey, they did it, folks. They fired a couple of people that killed all the aid workers. Now, they didn't uh, charge them with anything. No criminal penalties for murdering the best among us, some of the bravest heroes on this fucking planet. But they fired a couple of them. So I guess accountability, right? Good enough? No. No, fuck this. And I agree with Lexi Alex. This is like when uh, MBS punished all the bad men who chopped up Khashoggi for no reason he was aware of. Yeah. When the Saudi Arabian prince ordered the death of the American journalist, cut him up into pieces, and then uh, charged a few of his lackeys, pretend like he didn't know anything about it. It's exactly what they're doing fucking here. Easy to see through. Incredibly transparent. Uh, meanwhile... Former Condoleezza Rice advisor and NSC, speaking for all of us, I think. This has been bubbling up from behind the scenes for a while. President Biden, frankly, is furious at Prime Minister Netanyahu. Uh -huh. 
but yet still his administration has Fuck not you. conditioned sale, weapons sales, conditioned aid. They haven't done it yet. Now, maybe this is the moment that comes. This also happens just, we yeah, think, okay. a week or two, perhaps, before this Rafa offensive, which really could be a flashpoint. Okay, I'm so sick of hearing how upset President Biden is. The buck stops with him. If he wants to stop arms sales, if he wants to stop the bombs that are indiscriminately killing civilians, he can. He has the power. We don't need him going and his aides going to reporters and talking all background about how upset they are. What happened yesterday is still going to happen. When, at Mika's conference, the, uh, the head of the Palestinian Red Crescent spoke, and she was incredibly moving. This was in Abu Dhabi. And she spoke about the difficulty of aid getting in the country period from the north or south and she described a process that was kind of like the tsa changing the rules every single day going through airport security until those checkpoints are working and aid is going through we don't need to be giving any more arms sale or money it needs to stop it needs to be conditional yeah. it's ridiculous that it's going on unchecked and unfettered and we're sitting around and talking how upset we are while we hemorrhage billions of dollars it's the worst of all worlds right now fucking gaslighting that's all they goddamn do she's uh, right on at least jordan that's her name Somebody saying that the fact that the, we printed 40% more money has nothing to do with price gouging. It's, how can you argue with you people? How can you argue with somebody that's going to claim that printing 40% more money has nothing to do with inflation? I just can't argue with people. Like, it, it's it's stupid. It's incredibly fucking stupid to make the claim that printing 40% of more money and add to the monetary supply it does not directly lead to fucking inflation. I mean, you can't. So you believe whatever fairy tale bullshit you want to. But I know that's not true. That's just dumb as shit. So anyway, and last but not least, John Fetterman back, folks. Uh, it, it still seems like he's having trouble with the stroke. And the president is going to win here in, in Pennsylvania. And I've always believed that whoever wins Pennsylvania is going to be the next president as well, too. And this is going to be it's going to be difficult. And we all have to lean in on that. And we also have to start having you know, all kinds of Democrats criticizing the president, too, publicly. I, I don't understand why. I, I don't know what's in it for you to do that, whether you're just chasing clout or you want to make it in the news or anything like uh -huh, that. That's what it is. But if you're not willing to just support the president now and say these kinds of things, you might as well just get your MAGA hat uh, because you now yeah. Let me help you out, Strucker Race. It's the child murders. It's because of all the fucking children that Joe Biden has sent bombs to murder. Okay? Calling murderers out for murder doesn't make me fucking MAGA. It makes me a human being. It makes me somebody who has empathy, somebody that cares about my fellow man. Unlike you, you fucking ghoul. Go towards the light, you sack of shit. And that is my free Palestine. Somebody still talking about MMT says you have to either destroy, burn, delete, or tax the reserve money printed when it inflates. Yeah, I understand the the point she was making. She was making that there is a way to print money without inflation. But what she said was a fairy tale. The woman who's on the minority port, because what she said was not being done in any way whatsoever. There's a way you can print more money and make sure that the poor who is most affected by inflation actually are benefited uh, by uh, that printing of money more than the money that they have in the bank is eroded by inflation. But that's not happening. The money is mostly being pushed to the 1%, which has a more negative effect upon the poor, like for obvious fucking reasons. Anyway, move right along. I like to sit around and I like to talk to chat bots about stuff like this. I'm I'm uh, I'm boring that way. Me and uh, Google's Gemini Advance had some long conversations about modern monetary theory, about inflation, about about all this stuff. I highly recommend uh, asking questions to chat bots like that because uh, it's informative. And all right, what you guys think about uh, that? Chopsky was always right about Israel, and he took a lot of criticism over what he said. Over the years about Israel, yep, Chomsky has been right about Israel for sure. The cat's still having lesbian porn back there. I only see one. It's not even two. Um, his staff quit too. Yes, uh, John Fetterman, I covered that on the last show. Most of his uh, top staff have quit, resigned, gone to other places to work for actual progressives. 
We also have to replace money, so printing money that's out of circulation. Well, I mean, when we're talking about printing money, they, and we're not actually talking about printing dollars, printing cloth money. It's not paper, it's cloth. They basically, it's just ones and zeros of the central bank. Um, the central bank is the bank for other banks. And so basically the money pretty much stays right there because they uh, issue it to the government who goes out and pays their uh, contractors who then put it into their banks and then their banks bank with the central bank. So it just stays in the central bank, really. It's just moving ones and zeros around. Trump recently said he was like, Jesus, and the earthquake hits New Jersey. Blasphemy. Get him, Jesus. Poor honey floaty. Yeah, I know, but she a cutie, isn't she? She's so cute. Ooh, Miss Piper. Little Miss Piper. Yeah, she is. And all right, we're along, folks. As always, the show is way, way longer than I thought it was going to be. I thought the show would be over by now, and I still got religious bullshit. I still got Beyond Parody and a couple palate cleansers. So hooray for us. Uh, but for now, it's time for... <laughs> Starting us off on tonight's religious bullshit. Guess who's back, back again? Blobfish! Woo! And I do believe I speak for everyone when I say, Wow. Hell yeah! And everybody's favorite Alzheimer's pink hair grandmother also back. Cat Kerr. And uh, Cat Kerr have been talking to God again. And, uh, and she also lies. I guess she didn't get the part of the Bible that says, Thou shalt not lie. It don't matter. Here she is lying about Joe Biden. And Easter. What he did was the V person invited all the trans transvestites and all the other transgenders all by them. their choice mm -hmm. to come and entertain the children oh, no. who were there to do the Easter egg mm -hmm. hunt. Mm -hmm. They were the entertainment. Mm -hmm. Definitely That's that didn't the v happen. Person thought was no, important. it didn't happen, but okay. So let me tell you what. And he mm -hmm. said while they were doing all of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, he inter he interrupted them and said, I have to let you know, I'm so excited to see that you all are here. Well, he invited them. Of course they came. He said, I just wanted you to know that from this day forward, this day will not be known as Easter or the celebration of it. It will be known as the Transgender Visibility Day. From this day forward. Definitely happened. Uh, it will man, not I be didn't night hear night. that. I didn't hear I did that. not hear that. That's such a There's a reason you didn't hear that, because it never fucking happens. Oh, God, you guys will fucking believe anything. It was so dishonest. Uh, but that's religion for you, folks. And uh, then... Folks, did you know that there is a reference to Donald Trump in the Star Spangled Banner? It's true, because Johnny Inlaw and Blobfish explained it to me. Then conquer we must, when our cause it is just. And this be our motto, in God is our trust. Hmm. And the Star Spangled Banner in triumph shall wave. I meant to bring the triumph hat there to show that too. So there's the triumph there where you see, you take the I and the H out there, there is a Trump, and not to overdo the Trump thing, but it's there. <gasps> He's wrong! Oh my God, if you just take out some letters, it's a totally different word. Jesus, that proves Jesus is real. And uh, Donald Trump is his man. Undeniable evidence, y'all. Oh, ye of little faith. I believe now. And meanwhile, Sacramento Diocese uh, files for bankruptcy amid lawsuits. Where you at, Chaya Ratchik? Where you at, every single right-wing shithead who pushes the narrative that gays and trans people are coming to rape your children? Imagine raping so many children, you go bankrupt crickets from anybody on the right they don't actually give a shit about this in any way whatsoever but yes the diocese of sacramento announced that they had officially filed chapter of a bankruptcy protection it comes months after the diocese uh, announced its intentions to file bankruptcy in the wake of more than 250 lawsuits claiming sexual abuse by clergy and other staff uh, so good uh, but if this was uh Drag Queen Story Hour, if this is any other business company, anything that did this, 250 lawsuits, they would burn the whole goddamn thing down. They would torch the place. But churches, crickets, don't give a shit 
at all. Meanwhile, you guys hear about the QAnon Bible-thumping nut who carried a Bible up to the top of a 150-foot cell phone tower and uh, cost $500,000 for the damages. Yeah, totally cool. A man who climbed a cell phone tower in Miami early Wednesday without safety gear, causing major damage and service outages, has as he spent hours up on the structure before coming down, has been arrested, police said. The bizarre incident began when Miami police said the man started climbing the cell tower on 29th Street and Northwest 13th Avenue uh, after allegedly impersonating a T-Mobile worker. Yep. Right now we're getting our first look at the mugshot of a man who police say climbed on top of a cell phone tower and pulled out critical cables. The suspect refusing to come down for hours. Local sense Cody Weddle is live in Miami with the costly standoff. Cody. And Louie and Nicole, still not clear why this man climbed this tower. Isn't it though? What the fuck are you talking about? Yes, it is. It's 100% goddamn clear because they're 5G nuts. They're Trump QAnon conspiracy 5G nuts. Carrying his Bible fucking over there thinking 5G somehow activates the vaccine on you. We know exactly why he fucking did it. Why are you pretending, news? But quite the scare for people who were watching him. He was over 100 feet in the air and he had no safety equipment. Atop a 150 foot cell phone tower, a man climbs around like a kid in a jungle gym. At one point, becoming so exhausted, he finds a way to lie down and rest. The right leg of his pants ripped. He's carrying a Bible in his waistband. Miami police later identifying the man as 38 year old Richard Smith. Police say a T Mobile technician responded to the tower after it lost power at around 5 Wednesday morning. That technician found Smith pulling apart cables attached to antennas, which he continued to do throughout the morning. He then starts talking about God and uh, please come up here and see the view with me. At that time, the T-Mobile worker calls Miami police. Miami police hoisting negotiators into a ladder truck to try to convince Smith to come down. He was only in the middle. But then as the time went by, he started climbing up and up and up. The parking attendant at a nearby corner on. store says she interacted with Smith on Tuesday. He seemed like he had a problem, mm -hmm. but, um, a, a, you know, like a mental problem. Yeah, and no he shit. seemed like homeless. Yeah, all of you religious nuts have mental problems. So uh, pot calling the kettle black a little bit there. And then last but not least, one from Christian Nightmares. Folks, what would you do? with your Bible buddy. Things you can do with my Bible buddies. You can share your feelings with my Bible buddies. You could have a Bible study with my Bible buddies. You can snuggle up with my Bible buddies. You can have a praise party with my Bible buddies. And you can adopt even more buddies with my Bible buddies. So what would you do with my Bible buddies? <laughs> Things you can do. I love capitalism, folks, Christians. Taking every opportunity they can to try to make a buck off religion, this woman. Had a great idea. I'll make a little stuffed animal made out of a fucking Bible. I'll have a bunch of them made up. I'll sell them to idiot Christians. You know what I'm going to do with my bubble buddy? I'm going to cut a hole in the butt section and fuck the shit out of it. I'm going to come all up in my Bible buddy. Hey, I bought it. It's my property. It's legal. Thank you, lady. I always want to fuck a Bible. And that is my religious bullshit. Hell yeah. I'm also scared. I don't think that's satire. She sure printed out a lot of Bible buddies for it to be satire. I think she's just trying to make a buck off Christians. That's usually the way it is. America. Gotta love it. And uh, can we fuck? Hell yeah. I'm down if you're down. Get drunk with the Bible buddies. I'm with that too. Do some nitrous. Hell yeah. She's cute. Think I saw her in a bisexual three-way porn. Send me the link. Uh, I'd wipe my ass with those pillows. <laughs> that's your kink. I ain't gonna kink shame you. Have an origin of my Bible buddy? Hell yeah, I'm gonna fuck all those Bible buddies. And all right, folks, last chance to get your super chats in if you want to, if you're able. Uh, we're gonna do a Beyond Parody and the follow up real, two real quick palate cleansers. But first, Beyond Parody. And first off, on tonight's Beyond Parody, apparently, Mitchie and Kelly's uh, new con is to try to convince uh, women to fuck conservatives. Yeah, she real worried about who women are going to fuck these days. She says, girls, do not look for a man who sits cross-legged beyond the age of 10. Oh my fucking God, what is wrong with you people? 
or one who is wearing a mask unless he is elderly and has a disease or who thinks or who links arms never mind all the other stuff you need a real man that's right real man would never cross their legs fellas is it gay to cross your legs oh, it is it is and uh Medgy and kelly worried about who y'all fucking only um i couldn't help but notice as i was looking up pictures of Medgy and kelly's husband oh my god he's got his legs crossed what are you doing no no and he looks kind of twinkish to me not like a real man at all i think i saw this guy on grinder not that i'm on grinder anyway hypocrisy the house name is Medgy and kelly and uh then you know who i love walter masterson the best among us amazing satirist here's his latest trolling of city hall i'll call a walter masterson we need more cops everyone says that more police officers equals lower crime rates the only people who disagree are people that actually research crime and all they want to talk about is you know access to mental health care access to housing food forget those people the only way to reduce crime in this city is to put a police officer on every corner, every subway car, inside every classroom. Right now, we only have, what, 30,000 police officers patrolling the streets? We need to get those numbers up. Oh, she a horny it's bitch. simple math, right? She's there like, don't you go anywhere. 6,400 uh -oh, subway too aggressive. cars in our transit system. As 1,800 schools in NYC, that's 20,000 classrooms, 120,000 city blocks. We need almost about 150,000 officers on patrol at all times. Otherwise, who will be there to play Candy Crush on their phones as civilians disarm violent defenders? Last week, we had a horrible shooting on the A train at the Hoyt Shermerhorn stop. Now think about this. The Hoyt Shermerhorn stop already has a police station, but that didn't stop the shooting. But what if the subway car had a police officer in it? What if everyone on that subway car was a police officer. What if the shooter on the subway was also a cop? That would have been amazing. We, there would have been no like, you know, crime report or anything. We could have just handled it internally. We could end crime today. All we need to do is make everyone in New York City join the NYPD. Then assaults, murders, sexual assaults would just be handled internally. Someone steals a car, give them paid leave. Problem solved. You might be thinking, how are we gonna pay for this? Right now, the NYPD budget's $11 billion. That's only but 5% of the city budget. It should be 100% of the city budget. If, it'd be the only way to curb a crime rate that's already almost historically low. No parks, libraries, schools, homeless Sir? services, mental health officers, Sir? transit, arts, or happiness. Sir? Why would we need those things when we have the NYPD? Thank you. <laughs> Give them all the money. Why not? They're going to bankrupt us anyway. And yes, that is satire. He is not being serious. He is cool. I love him. And uh, last but not least on this week's Beyond Parody. You know what conservatives hate more than anything else in the world? Education. The more educated you are, the less likely you are to be conservative. So uh, let's all listen uh, to what appears to be a gypsy fortune teller, Roseanne Barr. evening and our Trump is here being the DJ and I've just danced and everyone's amazed. So I'm just going to say to you, please drop out of college because it's going to ruin your lives. Do me a favor, drop out. They don't teach you nothing good. Uh, email me or Twitter me or whatever you call me and I'll help you with your life. But you've got to get out of college because it isn't nothing but Devil-worshipping, baby-blood-drinking Democrat donors. Love you. Love you. That's right. You can just email Roseanne Barr, and she will help you with your life after you drop out of college. I mean, obviously, she won't do that at all. She's going to ignore you, and then you're not going to have a good job because you didn't get a college education. But she's going to enjoy her fucking wine and have another glass as she laughs at you. Vote Trump, y'all. And hell yeah. Looking good, Roseanne. Looking real good. And now, finish this off, folks. I got a couple palate cleansers for you. First off, this is an old video, but I saw it and I love it. Now you're going to watch it with me. A video camera was installed in the enclosure. This is the first reaction of the snow leopard when they first noticed the camera. Oh my God, just minding their own business. Turns around and sees it. Oh, my God. 
Oh my god, my whole universe has been wrecked. What the fuck is that? I love it. And uh, that, let's finish off on this one. Another cute kid video. I like us promoting good dads. We need more good dads out there. Dad power activated. Look how happy this kid is. How much he loves his dad. I'm just teasing him. You just barely do it like this? Like this? I did good? That's your turn, Daddy. Time for Daddy Power. My Daddy's strong. Best Daddy ever. Super high. Super high. Or maybe it's a girl. I don't know. I'm not going to uh, assume the gender of that child. Either way, it's cute as shit. And that is uh, my show. Hell yeah. Uh, join me tonight at the after party where we have all this stuff to cover. Not a whole lot. It might be a short after party, but it'll be fun because it'll be me and you hanging out together pretty much by ourselves. So cool. And uh, all right, let's read the super chats. Then we're going to do a, a kitty party. I found the kitty party song because you guys requested it. Bible buddies, I'll stick to Klondike bars. What would you do for a Klondike bar? Fuck it in the booty. You think the pandemic checks made the inflation? Um, I think, well, all right. Sort of. It added to the inflation. Most of it was the uh, the loans, the PPP loans that they gave out. That was way, way, way more than the little bitty pilly bullshit uh, that they put out for the pandemic checks. But yes, the PPP loans, which mostly went to rich people, was the biggest uh, theft of wealth in this nation's history and absolutely helped lead to inflation. Uh Argue me, argue me about it if you want to, but I don't, I don't know how anybody could research it and decide that that's not fucking true. So okay, whatever. Uh, you need to go talk to Chat GDP about it. Uh, thanks for covering the atrocities in Palestine. Hey, no problem, Carrie C. Thank you for uh, supporting the show. I appreciate it. Uh, Dad, down elders. Imagine during a debate, Trump calls him genocide Joe. Uh, that lie will single-handedly win Trump the presidency. Although Trump will likely do the same thing. He's great at making people look bad. True story. People say Trump would actually be worse. I don't know if he would be worse than uh, Joe Biden with Israel or not. He might be, but I don't know how he could be worse. He might be as bad, but I don't know how you could be worse than fucking Joe Biden on this issue. And uh, Pidge Hank, not to belabor the point, but MMT says you have to either destroy, burn, delete, or tax. I read this already. Uh, the reserve money printed when it inflates. Uh, that's an important part of it, but no shade. Uh, free Palestine, your best. Show. I mean, that's true. Like, I understand the point the woman was making. I understand m m the modern monetary theory, but it's based on an assumption or based on something that has to happen that is not happening. And so what, what is happening instead is, all right, so they're using these arguments that you can print money without runaway inflation, without doing the actual thing Things that you have to do to keep the inflation from happening so people are using the excuse of modern monetary theory uh, to print money but they're not doing the actual things that they have to do to make sure inflation doesn't happen so it's actually exacerbating the problem in my opinion but you're right um israel is cooked to future generations they're definitely uh, a pariah to the rest of the world mm. all right am i caught up I guess I'm caught up. All right. I think I read everything. If I missed you, I apologize. I make mistakes. I am a, a human being. So please forgive me if I do. Just tell me and I'll try to make it right in the future. Um, Mitchell God, Bible Buddies. All right, read that. Agent Orange, $20. Kitty Party. Here's the help in the first sanctuary. You rock, Agent Orange. And just for you, we're going to play the Kitty Party song right now. Folks, uh, join me Monday, Monday, Monday. It's only a weekend away from another episode of the world's greatest program. It's uh, the Dusty Show uh, coming at you. So hit the like button. Leave comments. Um, go, please become a patron. If you enjoy my show, please support it. Uh, me and the cats, uh, just trying to make a living. So please help me out if you can, uh, a, a couple of dollars a month. will mean a lot to you, but it all adds up. It really helps us. So please, um, help me if you can. Thank you in advance. And all right, I'll see you guys on Monday. Here is the kitty party song just for you guys. Boom. Here we go. Yeah. You guys ready for this? Time for some kitty party.
Scott Piper, Precious, Misty, Violet, Half Sash, and Pretty Boy. A good turnout tonight, Kitty Boy. Hell yeah. Love you guys. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys on Monday. Have a good weekend, everybody. Good night. Switch over now. Thank you, Agent Orange.